Uh, appreciate you being a cameraman. Here's what I got. This is a brake chamber axle setup, and it's a teaching tool. It's on an engine stand, and there's the air. When you're caging a brake chamber, you're going to chalk the wheels. You're going to release the brake. You're going to take this tool out with the T on it, put it in this end here, and turn it until it catches. It went in, okay, and it catches and you pull out, and it won't pull out now because you turned it clockwise. Then you're gonna take this nut and a washer right here. You're gonna need a washer, and it's best to use an impact uh, socket that's about this long. It's gonna be a special socket about this long. And But you're gonna run this up. When, when you run this up, like of course it's starting here, but I would use a washer, but you can use it just how it is. When you run this up, with the brakes released, it's gonna pull this rod out to get the pressure off of your slack adjuster so that you can take this pin out and then you can just change your whole brake chamber but I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this about brake chambers and this is real important this is a mechanical flange this one is not anymore because people were getting killed trying to change this o-ring this gasket this pancake gasket out and so they passed a law in congress actually to make this one not mechanical anymore this one you can still change if it's leaking this one you cannot. That's it. That's all I want to show on that. Okay, one other quick note. If you're changing one of these brake chambers, this clevis here, the distance between here and where it's threaded to might be different on your new one, so you cannot just take this brake chamber off. And measure the different the distance between a uncaged brake chamber and the new one from the threaded rod from here to here. You have to measure it with the new clevis on it from here in the center of this pin to here. That's your true distance. That's it. Hope that was helpful. Okay, something real quick about brake chambers here. All right, this is a thirty thirty six. Okay. And this is a 3030. Now, um, the rod at the top here is a little bit longer than this, but they have a 3030 like this one. Then they also have a 3030 long, okay? So, uh, longer stroke. Now, 3036 here. All right, so just so you understand what I'm trying to teach here. If you take, say you have taken off your brake chamber, uh, let's say this one. And let's say that you have already uncaged it, taken the bolt out um, slowly, you know, and release the spring. All right. And of course, this is the kind you see how these are sealed and these are mechanical because you can still change these, but these are the dangerous side. All right. Now, um, you don't want to cut this rod. This rod comes way longer than you need. You're going to have to cut it, whether you like to or not. I put a piece of tape and I mark the exact distance on it from here to there, and then I cut it. So you want to take this nut and you want to run it way down past, okay, past down here, you know, so if you're going to cut it, you're going to cut it above this. Then when you cut it with that hacksaw, you're going to clean it up best as you can and then you're going to run this back off and it's going to fix the thread, okay. Then you're going to run it back on, you're going to run it back and forth right here, then you're going to run it all the way off, then you're going to run it back on and you're going to run the clevis on, okay. The clevis has come attached to these things. Most times, well, that's where the, actually the Cajun tool is. And here's the clevis. They usually take these clevises and they take this nut off right here and they'll just put this clevis on here and it'll be bolted on. Okay, don't try to mount one like that. Surely you'd know better. But anyhow, this right here goes on the end up here. Okay, at the top of the threaded rod. Here, I'll pull it out so you can see it. All right, so the top one, it, this thread's on, just screws on, and the length has to equal up between the center of this pin and where your old brake chamber was here. So if your older clevis is longer, then you could make a mistake and you could cut this rod too short. Don't do that. Make sure everything's correct to the new clevis, center of the pin, the length will be right, okay? So, and then of course you've got uh, steer tire, steer tire, uh, brake chambers, you know, they're shorter, okay? It don't take as much, ain't no big deal, and they're just shorter. So, 
And then if you're gonna just change the pancake, this is the pancake, okay? That's all it is. So if one's leaking from there, that's where it's leaking. You can change that. Or you could actually take this part here, this part, okay? You could take this mechanical flange apart after you first you cage the brake chamber. Then you could take this mechanical flange apart, okay? Then you cage your other one, your old one, take its mechanical flange apart. Okay, you're still gonna have to undo the air lines. You're gonna, you know, have the wheels chalked and you're gonna relieve all the pressure off the air system and all that and take your air lines off, but then hang them out of the way. Then you can change this part without even having to cut that rod if you wanted to. And then you'll take your old one off and you'll put your new back end of your brake chamber right here onto the old already mounted still mounted still mounted down back in your brake chamber you can get off a mountain real quick like that you know if on the side of the road in the cold or wherever you're at um and then you can change this later if you have a problem or you can just leave it or you can actually just change the pancake uh thing that i just showed you this right here this right here is inside here and this is what usually leaks so it's all in how you want to do it <laughs> You like I said, it's a hundred different ways to do it, and you you don't, or at least four, and you uh, I can't really completely go over them. But if you're changing a brake chamber, they should give you the gist of changing one. And this nut right here, these you're okay on wrenches or sockets. However, when you're using this caging tool and you're changing out one, the first time you do one of these, you might do it with a wrench and run it all the way up. The second time, when you realize how hard that spring is and how hard it is, you're either going to take two sockets that are about this long and drill the inside of them out and weld them together and use them and make a caging tool, or you're going to buy that longer socket. I'll show you that longer socket in a minute, but it's from Matco, and it's about 57 bucks. So that's it on that, and I'll show you another one sitting up. All right, I'll add this to it too because this is a 30-30 long. There's a little more spring here, and uh, these are square, okay? And this is a regular 30-30, and these are round. That might help you tell the difference, delineate the difference in them, okay? All right, and this is the one that everybody's scared of, <laughs> happen to do, because this one's already caged. You see, the caging bolt is already run up correctly with a washer. Remember I mentioned a washer? Yeah, you want to use washer. Okay, and this one's caged, and it's just the short piece. Okay, and this right here is a 15 16 wrench, okay, on the end of the threaded rod here. And then at the bottom, same deal, 15 16 wrench, okay. However, when you get to caging this thing, all right, like I told you, you want to get that socket, that special socket, but... This is a ratcheting wrench, three quarter inch. If I can show it, three quarter, okay? That is your caging tool, okay? So you can use one of these. Um, but I'm telling you, for the distance it brings you out, you're better off getting that long socket if you ask me for my opinion, okay? This guy uses this one. Uh, that was a different way, so I want to show it, but I'm going for that socket. You can get it at Matco for about, uh, say, I think it's about 60 something bucks some of them are 75 whatever and um it's the it's the right tool for the job for sure and it's a uh, impact steel so you can use it with an impact electric drill gun that they have or you can use it uh you can do it with a ratchet so if you use that drill gun or even an air impact you can run this thing up quick that's that's doing it high tech and i've got one of those so that's how you do it because uh, this right here will wear you out quick. All right, I hope that was helpful. That's the best I can do on the brake chamber. I tried to teach what I knew. So, y'all have a good one. Uh, stay safe, and uh, hopefully you won't have to deal with the brake chamber anytime soon. All right, that's it. I'm out. Peace.